Hello, I'm Doris Edwards. I create video tutorials and podcasts for busy professionals who want to keep on learning. Because, of course, learning doesn't happen only at school and at training courses. In fact, being smart about building one's knowledge and refreshing one's skills is an essential skill in its own right. So, if you happen to be a busy professional who wants to learn smart, please check out my website called Ricky's Place. This full free episode belongs to a video series that links creativity and mind mapping. I've called the series Capture Your Creative Thoughts. Mind maps are a great way to structure unstructured thinking. Because, have you noticed, when we need to take decisions or in moments of stress and urgency, innumerable thoughts come and go and agitate our mind, sometimes to the point of making us confused or even panic-stricken. The mind mapping technique has many sides to it. In today's show, we are going to look at just two of its strengths. The visual impact, how a mind map document looks different from a traditional text-based document. And the creative impact, mind mapping makes it possible to capture the meaning of our thoughts as they appear in our mind without needing to worry about grammar and semantics right away. And by the way, you don't need a computer to use this method. It works just as well on traditional paper. Future episodes in this series will include four case studies about how mind mapping can help formulate concrete action based on a desire for change. For example, changing or reorientating one's professional activity. Reflections of this kind are not always comfortable as they trigger many thoughts, emotions, desires, passions and fear. Sometimes a first and soothing step is simply to capture this thought cacophony so as to get it off our minds and onto a more stable support such as a piece of paper or an electronic document. In this tutorial I'm using a free and nifty mind mapping software tool called FreeMind. I've played with it extensively and can recommend it to you. Please find the download link at the end of this tutorial. So what does a mind map look like? Here comes my first point. As we are at the beginning of a new year, I've decided to establish a learning plan for myself. This is not as easy as it sounds. What I learn has an impact on my job, maybe on my life. And obviously, my job and my life dictate to some extent what I need to learn. In fact, it's all about finding out what my needs are, my passions, my duties, and then about setting appropriate learning objectives and finding concrete ways to reach these. I could simply type my ideas and plans into a Word document like this. Most people do. In this document I have created four chapters that cover the key learning objectives I decided to retain – soft skills, computer skills, exam preparation and exams. And because I like a blended learning approach I have added subheadings called training style. The training style I choose depends on the subject matter and the type of intellectual effort required to assimilate this particular knowledge or skill. Intrinsically, there is nothing wrong with this Word document which consists of text organized by headings and subheadings. But now let's view this same information in mind map format. For me, the visual display allows me to grasp the overall concept immediately. One single glance is enough to capture the key points and the way each element relates to the other. Many of you might share this impression. Do you? It could be that you feel a little unsettled and prefer the text version after all. As already mentioned, mind maps do not only present information differently, they also have a creative impact. For example, how thoughts are connected to each other, how they interact and relate, how they depend on each other. Mind maps and their creative impact is my second point. But before we go there, you might be interested to know that mind maps can be works of art, as these three examples illustrate. Here is one about de-stressing your mind. This one gathers thoughts about retirement. And even Shakespeare's life can be explained in mind map format. When we need to make decisions based on numerous, unstructured and often indisciplined thoughts that agitate our mind, it is very valuable to recall sometime later not only the end result, usually a decision, but also the thought processes that got us there in the first place. As we have seen, mind maps, more than text, are good at showing relationships, dependencies and interconnections. Let's get back to my example, specifically the soft skills. The interconnections, relationships and dependencies between the key learning objective and the actual learning steps are clearly visible via the training style node. 
A few months later, perhaps when I ask myself why ever I took a certain decision, this document will help me recall my initial creative thought process. In conclusion, mind maps allow two things – to display information in a visual way that makes complexities easier to understand and assimilate, and to record dispersed thoughts. With mind maps we can creatively put thoughts in some sort of order without needing to worry about what to say. By making interconnections visible, we document thought processes and make it easier for us, and for others by the way, to understand why certain decisions were made. As promised, here is the link to FreeMind, the free software tool I've used to produce the mind map document you see on the screen right now. If you want to see it more clearly, I have prepared a PDF file for you. The download link is available at Ricky's place. If you are not yet a premium member, please check out the archive's treasure trove and Ricky's free episodes. The free tutorials cover a wide range of subjects and are ideal for an occasional learning boost. Watch out for the next episode in this series when I walk you through the creation of the mind map we have used in this example, with hints and tips on how to get started immediately and use the free software tool to the full. I hope you will be back. If you want to be informed when the next tutorial is ready, please leave your email address at Ricky's place. In the meantime, I am sending my very best wishes from Geneva in Switzerland.